This is the JVC TM A13 SU, I believe. Um, yeah, TM A13 SU. It's an S-Video composite monitor. And according to the eBay photo, it was made in January, I think, of 2007. So I just brought this package home. It should be, um, it was listed as open box, like barely used. And it's in its original packaging, I can tell, or at least it seems to be in its original packaging. So here we go. Okay. A layer of cardboard. Limited warranty. Very nice that I get that with this monitor in 2023. And um, instruction manual, not a service manual, but an instruction manual nonetheless. I think I found a service manual for these when I was searching online, although I'm not 100% sure. Um, it seems they make this model and ones like it for quite some time. I'm not sure if it's if there's any truth to the uh, to what I've heard on the internet, but the internet claims the internet claims that uh, these were uh, descendants of the JVC monitor that was used as the base of the Commodore uh, 1702, I believe. Uh, it doesn't really matter either way if it is or isn't, but, yeah. Okay, so this is an interesting cable here. It's got a BNC and an S-Video jack on one side, and it has got red, green, and blue connectors on the other, which are marked Y, Y, and C. No, V, it will, um, no, Y, U, and V, duh. So, I don't think this monitor actually supports that kind of input. I'm not sure if that cable was originally bundled with this monitor. I guess that's something we can find out. Yeah, it doesn't appear that this came with it. Maybe that's a cable so you can like combine the um, green, well the, the blue and red differentials from component video into an S video signal. I don't actually know. Could be interesting to find out. I, that's one thing that's always I've always wondered about how close the chroma pin of S video is to the signal output by component video, but I've never used an oscilloscope to test it. Okay, so I see some styrofoam padding here, a few little pieces of bag. Alright. So yeah, that's just dust. It's got scuffs right here, unfortunately. But other than that, looks pretty nice. I don't know if they mentioned the scuffs in the listing or if that's something that happened in shipping. Because I do see what looks to be a split in the styrofoam down here. Yeah, this thing came apart, so like this got banged pretty hard right there, probably. I don't know if that was recent or from a long time ago. Anyway, all things considered, not bad at all. I mean, given that a friend of mine just had their monitor um, delivered with the front bezel shattered and the front and rear of the cases separated by breakage the other day with a thin layer of like, well, the thinner kind of bubble wrap, the one that isn't this, like the one that's thinner and has smaller bubbles than this, um, in between the front of the screen and the side of the box. So, I mean, 
they got screwed. But I, I think I'm okay by comparison. I will turn this on in a moment or a minute. I like these handles. These, these are really convenient compared to uh, my BT-H1390YN or um, the Apple composite monitor behind that where the flyback is failing and this might end up being a replacement unit. Um, yeah, so that seems good. It came with a power cord. I see stickers on here. I'm not sure what those are supposed to mean. 327097, 327093. If I spot more, I'll mention them. At the back of the monitor it says January 2007. Uh, serial number 629, well, 0629 5050. Um, chassis TM32, 5060 hertz, has S video. Um, composite and um, audio built in and it looks like digital controls on the front yeah digital controls which is a little bit of a shame but I like knobs but it's going to be fine so um yeah I'm going to try turning this on and see what happens one moment so yeah the other day my um my Apple monitor decided um, to start flickering randomly while while I'm um, showing a picture and making popping noises, which to me that combination means probably there's arcing in the flyback transformer, um, which is basically death because Apple, of course, being Apple, does not have a part number for the flyback transformer, only the complete bottom circuit board, and they have no labels on the flyback transformer on the board, so I can't even figure out what um, Hitachi's part number was, because it looks like it's an Hitachi-made product. Um, anyway, so this um, new monitor I got, it wasn't meant to replace it, but I ordered it, and then the Apple One started doing it, so fortuitous circumstances. It's the same size, roughly the same appearance, a uh, different color. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to turn it on just because it's been acting funky. But, so you have a point of reference. Here's the Apple monitor. So aesthetically speaking, you can see how that fits in. Um, this was my first composite monitor, so I'm really hoping that I can get it fixed someday. I'm probably not getting rid of it because like, otherwise it's in pretty good shape. Like the case is in good shape. Most of the ones I see online have uh, missing front flaps. So I'm hoping maybe I'll uh, find another Apple IIe composite monitor um, and be able to do some swapping of components to make one nice monitor again. But that's not, that's not something that's on my short list of things to do. That's a long-term thing. Yeah, this one feels about the same way, maybe a little lighter, which is really nice. It has these really convenient holding handles as well, which the Apple monitor lacked. And I don't know if you, yeah, that, that'll probably get you a better picture of it. It's, uh, they're really handy, and I like it a lot. So it's aesthetically, oh, there's also one here. So it's aesthetically speaking, though, you can see it, it fits right in. Um, it's black instead, which is both better and worse, I guess. Uh, matches more with everything else on the table at the moment, but not so much with the beige computer case. But with the laser display and everything, yeah. And it's the same size, about 12, 13, 14 inches. It seems like manufacturers always use different size measurements, like some measure from the bezel in, some measure from the actual corner of the glass that you can see in, some it's the corner of the glass, the other corner of the glass which are hidden by the bezel. I, I don't really know what to make of it. But, yeah, here's this. Uh, can I hit the buttons? Buttons feel okay. They're, they're, they're buttons. Power switch makes a nice sound. Um, 
Yeah, and um, with it here, I mean, you can kind of see this little thing, but just barely. I mean, I could probably paint over that, and it would look perfectly normal again. So yeah, um, power cable. Oh, I already have a power cable back there, actually. I've prepared for this. Um, convenience of having a setup like this is that you can do this kind of thing where you just walk around to the back of your table and it's no sweat because you have a couch right behind it. Um, on the other hand, I did not remember to put the BNC adapters on. But I can do that now. BNC to RCA adapters, by the way. Um, I believe these ones are 75 ohm, but the listing didn't actually say. Um, <laughs> we'll see if it matters. It technically can, but more so for higher resolution content, like 720p, 1080p, that kind of thing, or 1080i even. These BNC connectors seem more um, resistant to me plugging them in on this monitor than they were on my other one. I don't know why that is exactly. My other one is also a Panasonic monitor, the BTH1390YN, I believe. I don't remember that number because I had to look up the service manual so many times. And actually, you can't find the service manual. You can find it for the BMH1400PN-A or something, which is another JVC monitor. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, JVC and um, Panasonic are both the Matsushita um, as the manufacturer, or at least they were. By the time this was made, it looks like Victor was a separate company again. Uh, based on the label on the back, not saying Matsushita. But they were making this through the Matsushita period, I believe. Would not be surprised if there's a Panasonic tube in here. Uh, we'll get to that part later. So, um, for now, um, let's see. Looks like video inputs on top. Um, should be an S video cord in here somewhere. big bag of goodies. No, it's not important. We can get to that later. Okay. Oh, here it is. So the other monitor was hooked up via RGB. This does not have RGB inputs on it. So um, there will be a little difference there. And it's mono audio input, but I'm just going to lazily attach um, one's the input and one's the output. It's like left in the input, right in the output, and it's either tied together so that they'll both propagate through and reach the speaker. Because I think that's usually how it is. Okay, should be ready to turn on. Kicked right up. I just heard the uh, 15 kilohertz buzz start. Quite a bit louder of a buzz than my Apple monitor made, but there's also more ventilation on this one, and honestly, that might be a good thing for its longevity. Uh, my Panasonic, my other Panasonic monitor, make, takes a similarly um, makes a similarly loud piercing noise to this one. Um, I'm not too worried about. It. Oh yeah, that's bright. Yeah, this thing is like new. Like the listing said, it was basically new, and it definitely looks it here. I mean, this is way more like bright than my other one is. Um, the phosphor pitch looks similar to the Apple IIe monitor. Not the uh, 750 TV line RGB monitor that was over there when I was unboxing. But yeah, that, that, that many brightness is intense. And I don't know how much you can see that in the video. Um, let's move the camera closer. And try to turn the exposure settings change the exposure settings around a bit. Um, just aperture. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, the rest is pretty darkened out now, I bet, but at least you can see the, uh, the intensity I'm talking about properly. Now I'm about to uh, turn this on after making sure it's on the correct input, which should be input A, I believe. Okay. 
And unfortunately, you can't turn off comb filtering, like two-dimensional comb filtering on this. But someone made a mod to do so, so I might do that later if it bothers me. For 240p, it can matter a little bit. Okay, yeah. Wow, that looks bright. I mean, I've forgotten how good a new CRT looks because, like, all of mine were ancient. And um, one of them particularly... Um, I'm turning the contrast down, actually, just to preserve it a little. <laughs> Um, that's the minimum contrast level right there. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I forgot how good they can look new because all my modders saw years and years of use in the TV station. Also having fine, like larger grain phosphors on this one can make a big difference as well. Um, in terms of how bright it appears. Like, yeah, I'm gonna turn the contrast back up to its normal point because it looks like that was impacting the, uh, color a little bit, although I bet it's also just the, um, is this composite or is this, is it, is it thinking that's terminated or unterminated because I have the connector plugged in? I bet that's what it is. But I'm making an adjustment, I don't know, volume? Okay. So, um, I should have done this first. I'll plug that jack and see if the brightness changes. Because like it automatically detects if it needs to terminate the signal or pass it through. So my thought was maybe that was the problem or the source of the problem, rather. Um, okay, plugging in the S-Video connector. And I'm gonna unplug the RCA cable. The Oh, I unplugged the S video too. Oh, wow, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, so like that is, that is something to behold. I really like it a lot. Like this might become my new main set, even though I initially bought it on impulse because it was listed as like new and it looks really cute. So yeah, um, the speakers are pretty loud too. The speakers aren't anything to write home about. They're still um, like video monitor speakers, which means you're really expected to have external speakers. And the menu is very limited looking. Which is unfortunate, but it's still more advanced than the Apple II, which is no menu system at all. And I'm sure there's like a debug menu I can get into. Uh, let's see. Let's start trying things. So I'll try phase and menu. Menu and phase. Okay, menu and phase gets me horizontal position, white balance, and control lock. Uh, that just gets me regular menu. Okay, here we are. Um, ah, nope, I didn't do it. Okay, so it looks like the video cut out. Um, this camera loves to do that, and I haven't found a fix for it yet that really works, even with Magic Lantern. Um, that fits within my storage limitations. Um, and doesn't involve HDMI output capturing, because that kind of looks terrible. Um, but yeah, so I was looking through this for the service menu. Menu, contrast... Um, gets you the S thing, which basically means you hit, need to hit another button. If you hit phase, it says, please do not touch. Um, menu, contrast, phase. Menu again? No. Menu, contrast, phase, chroma. Menu, contrast, uh, menu, contrast, phase, A or B input selector? No. Contrast phase menu. The 
this is not the service menu. So there's a setup menu, which is um, menu phase, menu contrast phase, contrast. No, no, that, that wasn't contrast. I will figure this thing out, I swear. Menu contrast phase. Huh. Well, I'll check the service manual and we'll be right back. Okay, so I figured it out. Um, I was very close. So, one, press the menu and contrast keys simultaneously. You get the S in the corner. Then, while it's displayed, hold, press menu and hit, uh, sorry, menu contrast, menu phase, and then plus, press the plus or minus key without holding anything else. So the problem was I was continuing to hold menu instead of just hitting plus or minus. Here's the service menu, and it looks very similar to the one on my BT-H1390YN, which is the um, RGB modder that you saw over there. Um, I had changed the color to be white, so I'd forgotten that initially the menu was yellow when I turned it on. But on my, on, in the service menu, there's a setting to change the color of the menu itself. Um, so yeah, then um, there's signal block, white balance block, deflection block, control block. And I can tell that this one's less advanced in a lot of ways than um, the RGB modder, just in terms of things like color bloom and how it handles that. But, or rather, doesn't really handle it very much. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, and it also has this, this thing down here, which my other one does not, so that's interesting. This monitor was made, like, five years after that one, though. Um, yeah, so let's hit the exit thingy, which is menu. Okay, so signal block, white balance block, I'm not going to touch that. Deflection block. Um, deflection blocks where you can like change the positioning on the screen and the screen width and height and whatnot. So if you want to see stuff in the um, overscan region or underscan, I don't actually know. It's so, like, but basically the stuff that's usually cropped off on the TV. Um, if you're looking for that, then um, then yeah, you'll find it in the deflection block area. Then control block, I think that's where like the, the color settings and things are. And um, if you look up the service manual, which, oops, <laughs> aluminum tripod, folks, very cheap, um, also pretty volatile. So yeah, if you look up the service manual, which I have here, and you probably won't be able to read it very well or anything, but maybe. Um, yeah, that looks good. So if you look in the service manual, you can find um, basically a table. Um, and it wasn't too hard for me to find this service manual. So, I mean, I might link to it, but I kind of think you can probably find it on your own. Um, I might make a version where all the pages are rotated correctly and share that or something. I did that with the H1390YN manual, which made my life much less annoying. Um, so yeah, um, there's all the stuff about disassembly instructions. Then after that, memory, IC replacement. If I had a way to, I would love to dump the EEPROMs in this so that like, if they ever fail, the monitor's not soft bricked. Um, but I'll, I still need to do that. Then um, check and change setup menu. I don't even have the hardware for it, and it's been like on my to-do list for years and years and years. But, um, yeah, so, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so here's the service menu setting items page. And um, first it's showing the signal block, the white balance block, the deflection block, which, okay, deflection block has both 50 hertz and 60 hertz modes, horizontal center, vertical size, um, VS correction, which I'm guessing that has something to do with well, either vertical sizing or with like some sort of pin cushion thing. I, I don't actually know. Um, 
vertical center is not used for 60 hertz apparently or it just says not use in bold next to it not 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 used not use so maybe it just doesn't want you to use it uh, vertical linearity and the control block yeah this has um, the on-screen display position uh, the upper and lower brightness contrast chroma and phase um, the hour meter so this one has an hour meter which uh, the 1390YN lacks, I think. And, um, oh, a remote control thing? Does this, does this work with a remote? I don't see an infrared window, but it says Remocon here. So I'm assuming that's sort of a remote control. I didn't see an input on the back either for like a wired one, I don't think. Yeah, there's not one, so I don't know what they're what they're getting at here, but that might be something to look into. Uh, maybe there's like some unpopulated spot on the circuit board, and this is some leftover from another model. Who knows? Um, I think this was probably written by a Japanese person because there's a few things like Remokan that you wouldn't expect to see in English, but that are pretty common in Japanese as abbreviations. Also misspellings, S-filed, instead of probably S-field, I would assume. Chroma trap settings. Um, C-T-O-F-S-W. Chroma something filter. I don't know. Maybe you can turn off the, turn off the comb filter that way. Might be something to look into. I turned the contrast way down on here, by the way, to try to make things a little bit less burny in, even though like the display is brand freaking new. Way brighter than my Apple monitor, by the way. I mean, no comparison. And the Apple monitor took like half an hour to warm up too, so quite a difference. That thing was tired. I loved it though. I would love to get it working again. Um, yeah, and then the rest of it is, looks like other things. Okay, so there's a CPU, which they call the microcomputer, which I guess it is if it's like a, a microcontroller thing. A memory chip. VC def decoder. <laughs> VC def decoder. Um, not decoder, decoder. Um, sorry, I, I, I love to laugh at this stuff. It's, it's just genuine mistakes that don't matter because only service people see them and they know what it's meant, probably. But, um, V center down up. I'm guessing that's like a switch. Focus and screen knobs on the flyback. Yeah, there's a lot in here. Um, it's great that it has a service manual because I know some monitors that don't have it and it makes just working on them a lot more annoying. Um, the Apple monitor doesn't even list part numbers for like the flyback, which is really frustrating. And I think I said that before, but maybe the video cut out when I said that. Uh, Yeah, so I guess really all I'm doing right now is just reading through the service manual with the camera turned on. So I can probably stop doing that. But <laughs> um, basically, yeah, I, I just got this thing. And it looks great. It was made in 2007, so it's right at the end. Um, you don't see scan line artifacting, which I actually like that about this monitor because... I mean, yeah, there is a unique look to the scanline effect, and it can look nice, but, I mean, for me it doesn't do very much, and I, I have a PVM20L5, like a Sony, like, late model, high-end, 20-inch CRT, and I never cared for the effect on there, the scanline effect. It's still a cool screen, but that's all it is. Um, and that one's really worn, compared to all my others, but... Yeah, it was free, I can't complain.
Um, so yeah, the pitch on this is a lot, a lot um, less fine, I guess I would say. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's a pretty nice looking thing, and I'm I'm really happy so far. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm almost not regretting how much I spent. <laughs> well, I'll do that regardless. Okay, I'm gonna stop and start the video again. Just complain to Canon, not me, for the video cutouts. Because it's all Canon's fault, really. Okay, new video started. So, um... Yeah, I, I guess I'm just looking through here now, and I really shouldn't be adjusting these blindly. So I'll go back up and see in the service manual what it was that I was just changing accidentally, without paying attention. OSD H position. Uh, it doesn't appear to actually say what the defaults are, so that's that's great. Maybe it does somewhere else. Oh, yep, here it does. Initial setting value of the service menu adjustment items. So, yeah, um, you should be able to read that. Yeah, um, so, yeah, much like the H1390Y, and this also has that um, set up in it. These screens seem very similar in terms of the software behind them. Um, I'm guessing it's mainly the tube. Well, the tube and the other one is like a PC monitor tube, but running at 15 kilohertz. So, like, it's a lot finer dot pitch, and it's a tri-dot monitor instead of like using the slot mask with uh, rectangular phosphors. Um, and yeah, old PC, old computer monitors from like the home computer era would be more like this one that I have set up right now. Um, probably looks great with my Amiga when I do that. Well, no, it wouldn't because Amiga composite's kind of crap, but it would still look good. And um, composite video off of like a VIC-20 or a Commodore 64 would look great on this, I think. Um, yeah, so I was looking for C10. Okay, the initial setting is 12. Oops. I changed the input. But it doesn't seem that actually cancels out the service menu, which is great. Oh no, I'm in C01 now. So that, that's normally at 11. Um, Two is okay. No, so um, this is the SU, so it says the typical value is six for number one. But it's um, it's seven on the A thirteen UCV, which I don't know what the difference is there. I could probably find out with some research, but I'm not doing that right now. Um, so eleven. This one's supposed to be sixty three, sixty three, sixty three. Um. 06 is not supposed to be 63, it is supposed to be 0. The next one's 30, 50, 50, 50. No, no. 0, 30, 50, 50, 12. So, like, this one is supposed to be 12. Uh, 5, 0, 1, 1. Yeah, I don't think I changed any of the rest of these. I guess because I'm doing video recording, I could actually find out and fix it that way, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the contrast apparently lets you hide it temporarily, which is good. Um, yeah, and then exit. And I'm not going to mess with this much more, but I am curious if there's like an OSD color setting that I can find. I have an OCR uh, Python script running, so in the future I'll be able to search through the text in this thing, which will be nice. But I don't see the thing about the color settings, which is a little bit of a shame. I prefer white over yellow. That's all. Um, 
Not important in the slightest, though. Yeah, here's the schematic. I wonder if it says what the video processor is. It looks like it uses I squared C for communication, like I2C is how other people say it, but I squared C for communication. So uh, that's good. It's a pretty industry standard thing, although there's lots of variations. Basically, it means that it should be possible to um, basically hack into this thing by um, inserting a chip in between this in the signal path to like pass through everything except for certain commands from uh, other parts of the board. Um, yeah. Based on what I'm seeing in this schematic, at first glance at least, it looks like it's a pretty simple monitor, all things considered. Looks like this is the big uh, main chip and it looks like it has Oh yeah, so this, this does have RGB inputs, analog RGB inputs, for the um, on-screen display. So, I'm not talking about like changing the color of it now, but because it has that, you could um, RGB mod this thing. So that'd be fun. And that's something I probably couldn't do as easily on the Apple monitor, because I don't think it has line level RGB like that. Or something close to line level. Yeah, so analog R in, analog G in, RGB, um, analog B in. Uh-huh. Oh, and also there's digital inputs too. Interesting. So it uses the digital inputs for the OSD, and it looks like the um, analog inputs are tied to ground through some capacitors. Um... And there's analog YS in. I, I'm guessing that's like Luma and Sync. So yeah, th this has everything you'd need for um, RGB built into it. You just have to tap some points, it looks like. Relatively simple mod. You don't even have to disconnect the OS, the digital OSD, probably. So yeah, that's great. Um, no easy way to get components, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, well, it has B minus Y out, R minus Y out. Oh, R minus Y in and B minus Y in. So yeah, you can get component as well through um, these pins up here. That's really neat. It takes some doing. I don't know exactly what I'll be involved in that, but yeah, it looks like it's tying B Y in to B Y out through a capacitor and the same for RY in and RY out. And there might be more involved in like um, actually making it select those inputs. So that could, that could become tricky, actually. But hopefully, it's something doable. Um, my guess is it's doable without like arcane knowledge, I hope. Um, TB1226CN. Data sheet. Oh, what's this here? Ah, uh -huh. RGB modding a different JVC monitor which has the same circuit, which has the same IC in it. So someone's done my work for me, at least for that part, not for the component video part. And now my slow old hard disk is chugging away, so just give it a second. It'll get there, one of these days. The map of Shua. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so that looks like it's a that, that, that looks like it's a ten inch version of what I have, basically. I mean, it has the uh, metal box on the back, but the um, A one thirty SU has that, and it's otherwise it otherwise looks a lot like this one. So um, yeah, um.
looks like they removed some capacitors and then attached the RGB signals to the open pads um, through a capacitor and uh, looks like a resistor divider. The 75 ohm resistor is probably termination. The 30 ohm, I'm guessing like that's to change the input voltage. Um, this, this, the, the voltage of the video input, like point to like peak to peak. Um, yeah, they, they explain it more here, but I'm not going to read it in detail right now. Um, and yeah, you can just use the input A or B to input the synchronization pulses. Okay, so yeah, you do need to mess with I squared C. And it looks like this guy already wrote some software. Or girl, I don't know. Whoever they are. Nice. So, yeah, apparently it's being told to kill the RGB contrast register and mute RGB but you can change that. So it looks like I have a few mods I might end, end up doing. And they used an Arduino clone. Ha, <laughs> they put a SCART on it. I wouldn't have done that. I, I like my BNC RGB inputs or RCA just because I don't have SCART cables. I'm not living in Europe, but to each their own. And yeah, so it looks like I have a ready-made, a ready-made um, design here that I could use. And there's another post on a different JVC monitor, which seems to have a similar chip. So yeah, I'm, I'm just thankful for these gods who know more than I do. I mean, Okay, so the video cut out again. Again, complain to Canon, not me. Um, it's their fault. But, um, yeah, so basically this is, um, they, they've modded two RGB monitors. Um, the one I was looking at, and then this one. Oh, and there's another if you click on this. So it's really nice that um, basically this is ready-made stuff I can use, hopefully. Um, and yeah, it looks like this person has a 17 inch or so, um, tri dot monitor. This is not like, so this is more like what my Panasonic looks like, um, much more defined as scan line, um, or rather the black lines between the scan lines. Um, but yeah, it looks, looks nice, but yeah. Now I want that monitor. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so gotta catch them all. But yeah, someone's done my work for me, and I'm really happy about that. So I should be able to RGB mod without having to re-engineer everything at least. Maybe I'll have to re-engineer a little, because they are different mod models of monitor. But yeah, they have the same jungle IC, which is like the chip that controls the video inputs and stuff. So. Um, yeah, I have that to look forward to. And, um, yeah, that should be fun if I ever end up doing it. But for now, it's just a great composite and S video monitor that's, like, seen very little use. I kind of wonder what the hours are on it. That's C24, so let's see if I can remember. Menu contrast, menu phase, plus and minus. Okay, so yeah, we want the control block. Sorry, I'll move the uh, thing. Go 
looks like I might have to do that and then adjust the aperture. There we are. So, um, yeah, if I, um, from this screen, jump to C24, one, it looks like. So I don't know if I can adjust that. Nope, I can't. So yeah, this monitor has one hour of use on it. Unless it got cleared, but it looks like it didn't. Like visually, this is extremely good. Um, so yeah, basically, I'm very happy with this purchase and I'm excited to share. And I hope that you learned a little bit and asked me questions if you got them.